this, uh, all these things, uh, these things uh, going on. And we still, we have to look, therefore, not just at the present crisis and what it means, but why this system, even in the good times, can't deliver the basics for its people. And I'm talking about Britain here. We start talking about the developing <coughs> world, but people don't have access to water, don't have access to food, don't have access to medicine, or to any of the, the basic things that people need in order to uh, in order to live. There is something deeply wrong with it. Now, when you talk about the problem being capitalism itself, what do we mean? Firstly, is a system based on profit. Everything has to have a price, and that is supposed to be the way in which things work. Now, how can you put a price on what it takes to care for a child or for a sick person or to do all the things that people do? And certainly, the price that's put on their wages for nurses and all these people is not very high in this society. But it's also true that it is a system where everything is brought into the market. The education, therefore, becomes something about producing, at the end of it, people who can themselves sell their labour power and become commodities. If you look at another aspect of capitalism, it is a system based on competition. Competition between different capitals. Now, when you look at the um, competition between different capitals, competition spreads throughout our whole society. The whole exam system is based on somebody has to win and somebody has to lose. The whole of the television programs you see now from, you know, everything. You don't just watch a cooking program anymore. It's about chefs battling it out as to who can cook it faster or quicker or using more ingredients. And this is true about Strictly Come Dancing. It's true about all of these things. That there have to be judges. There have to be rules. There have to be people who are thrown out of the competition at any stage. And this is something which isn't just an aberration. This is part of capitalism and part of what it does. And of course, because it's a competitive system, and capitalists compete with each other, and Tesco's compete with the same street, and the car companies compete with each other, and all these different things, it leads to open production. And then you have a situation, as we have now, where not that there aren't enough houses to house people. There are blocks of flats standing empty in every city, but that nobody can afford the price that is being put on those blocks of flats. And the same is true of food, it's true of all of those, uh, those kind of things. Now, the question there, I think, for us today is how do we change it? And you know, when people talk about socialism, socialism has been around as an idea for something like 200 years. And I suppose you could say we should have got it right by now, or I suppose you could uh, you could say that's a long time where you can take a lot of wrong turnings and do and make a lot of uh, make a lot of mistakes over the years. And there have always been debates and arguments as to what socialism means and what it really uh, what it really stands for. Now. I would say there have been two sorts of socialism. Socialism from above, which is generally the tradition represented much more by the Labour Party, which is that, that somehow elect us and we'll do something for you. And that has failed. <coughs> if you look at the um, uh, uh, New Labour, I mean, I suppose New Labour doesn't even pretend that it's going to do very much for you, to tell the truth. But even when you had periods where you had much more substantial reform than you did in the 1940s with the 1940s, Labour government through big nationalisations, the National Health Service, and these other kind of things. It didn't succeed in shifting the balance of wealth and power in the whole of society. And that's because Labour sees itself as acting on behalf of people and in terms of, uh, in terms of managing capitalism rather than, uh, rather than getting rid of capitalism. Then you have the different aspects of different socialism below, which have never, in the, or most of the time, apart from the example, the successful example for a time of Russia in 1970, have never been able to successfully, for any length of time, been able to, um, been able to win their, uh, their model. But socialism through low, it seems to me, is an absolutely crucial concept. And you see, when people talk about socialism is, when I first became a socialist, people said to me, it's a very, very complicated question what socialism is. Now, somebody said to me at the time, it's not complicated at all, it's a very simple question, but all the people who want to debate about socialism and make it a more complicated question. And over the years, I've begun to think more and more that that's true. But what socialism really is about is production for need. In other words, we, the working class people, produce the wealth in society. So we produce what we need, not what the rich need, not waste, not weapons of mass destruction, not all of those things. And it's under workers' control. In other words, not only do we produce what is needed, but we decide collectively where the wealth of society goes. Does it go into new hospitals or new schools or new nurseries or a national childcare system? Or 
or does it go into renewing Triton? Well, I think any society under workers' control would realise that it wasn't going to go into creating more and more nuclear weapons. And it seems to me, therefore, that's what socialism is, and that's really what we should, uh, we should fight for. Now, just to conclude, I'll say this. When we talk about socialism in the abstract, it's absolutely obvious to everybody in, in this country that while I think tens of thousands of people can be won to socialist ideas as a result of the crisis, as a result of understanding what Karl Marx said about the crisis and all this kind of thing, there are much bigger numbers of people, millions of people, who are affected by what's happening to their jobs, their mortgages, all these things, who want also to organise and fight back. And at the basis of socialist politics, is the idea that we're not just a group of people who talk about socialism, we also try to give a lead inside the working class as to what we think we can do in order to overcome the crisis, in order to make sure that working people don't pay for the crisis. There are three things. The first is resistance. That everywhere that people resist, again, whether it's against pay cuts, whether it's against unemployment, that is where socialists should be, and that is the most important starting point for all of us. Whether we're anti-war campaigns, whatever it is that we do, we start with this particular question. The second question is politics, that you have to have a political analysis in order to understand that this isn't just a crisis that can be reformed. It's not just that the banks are a bit out of control, it's not about any of these things, but you need a completely different system. And thirdly, what we need is organisation. And that's what socialists also fight for. You cannot be a socialist on your own. You have to organise collectively in order to change the world. And that's really what the debates today are discussing about how we can succeed in changing the world. Um, the question about resistance is absolutely central. You see, the point that Johnny made is very, very important, that you have to try to resist. You don't know, you never know when you go into these things. You can never be certain what the outcome is going to be. You never know whether people will fight, or in many, many cases that they might want to fight, but they don't, and they don't feel confident enough to do so. But if you don't do anything, if you just sit and watch the television, and there's all these job losses going in there, that really isn't what socialists should be doing. It isn't what we should be doing. We're not just sitting there trying to fix by, you know, how deep is it going to be, how long will it be, all these other kind of questions which may make fascinating discussions at various meetings. This is about how do we organise and how do we, um, how do we change the world. When we started to stop the war, you know, when we first started to stop the war coalition, we had a very big meeting, but at the next meeting there were all sorts of people saying you can't set up a permanent movement, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't raise all these different demands, you can't do these other things. We did it. We went and did it, and that was successful. Now, with the charter, with all the other things that people are talking about, people have to try. They have to say, okay, there's a factory closing, and for heaven's sake, now, every town has got places, whether it's offices or factories or banks or any of these things where people are in the threat. We have to try to do it, and it is absolutely basic. The ABC of socialism is that you have to start from this. Now, that's not the end of it. That's not the XYZ of socialism. Because the XYZ is also about how you develop the ideas that, um, that people that people said. And I mean, Tony talked about Karl Marx, and you know, I agree absolutely about Karl Marx, but we should remember a lot of Marx's ideas. A lot of his writing isn't just about capital, and you know, that's the big work that he spent years and years doing when there wasn't a lot happening in the class struggle, and when you, you know, Engels kept him and all this kind of thing, so he could sit in the British Museum all day and, and write it. But actually, some of Marx's best writing is about the 1848 revolution. Germany and the consequences, how you can't rely simply on reform, how you can't trust the people who you might get elected to government, but then you've got to push it much further, the movement has to push it much, much further. He came back to these questions with the Paris Commune much later in his life, towards the end of his life. Why? He was involved in these struggles. He was a revolutionary, an active revolutionary in um, Germany, in, in Cologne in 1848. His daughters were involved in the Paris Commune in marginally, but they were, they were part of it, and actually there was a married uh, people who were, or two of the married people who were exiles in the Paris Commune, because they saw that their theory came out of the practice of successes and failures of the working class movement. And that is what we have to learn. We have to start with resistance, we have to get with politics, and we have to build the organisation.